My name is Sarah McAvoy. I'm putting together a little video presentation about basic oxygen delivery devices. The respiratory system plays a very crucial role in the uh, homeostasis and health of human beings, for any, for any animal for that matter. And in the hospital situation, it's imperative that nurses are able to perform timely and accurate respiratory assessments. It's also important to recognize that when oxygen is ordered, that it's delivered correctly. There are different methods of delivering different types of oxygen, and it's important that the nurse understands the difference and the little nuances between those. It's also uh, recognized that some new nurses don't recognize the differences in oxygen delivery, how to do it, and also it's a, it's a big concept for nursing students to grasp. Therefore, the intent of this video is to give some basic understanding of some of the basic oxygen delivery devices. Now we're going to talk about the nasal cannula. It is the most common oxygen delivery device used in the hospital setting. It's also a pretty common uh, home therapy uh, delivery system for oxygen. You can set the uh, titrate to the flow rate for a nasal cannula anywhere from 1 to 6 liters. And in so doing, you're delivering FiO2 from t anywhere from 24 to 44 percent. Now, if you set your uh, nasal cannula flow rate to 4 liters or above, you must add a, a humidifier to the oxygen. However, you can add humidity at lower flow rates per patient comfort. Uh, for example, if the patient has uh, complaints of dryness, nosebleeds, you can go ahead and set a humidifier to your oxygen. And the way that you're going to set a humidifier to the oxygen is you're going to first come to your uh, oxygen you're going to come to your oxygen flow meter on the wall and you're going to notice that uh, in the hospital this is pretty uh, commonly called the Christmas tree. It's a little green device. You cannot have that on there when you're going to when you're going to connect your uh, bubble uh, humidifier. I'm just going to take the top, you're going to screw it onto your oxygen, you're going to get your nasal cannula, connect it, there's a port right here that you can connect it to, and then you're going to set your desired flow rate. Your oxygen. Another low flow delivery oxygen device is the simple mask. It provides FiO2 of 40 to 50 percent. Now you have to run the simple mask at least five liters to flush out the patient's own CO2 out of the mask. This happens to be a pediatric simple mask, however, the adult uh, simple mask would be the same, just made for an adult. Uh, like I said, you run it at least five liters. You may increase the flow rate to 12 liters depending on the patient's need for oxygen. The advantages of using a simple mask are for those patients who have had some sort of nasal obstruction, some kind of nasal surgery, or for patients who are prone to mouth breathing. Um, one of the disadvantages of using a simple mask is that it makes it more difficult for the patient to eat. Another device we're going to discuss is the Venturi mask often referred to as the Venti mask in the hospital setting. The Venturi mask is a combination nasal cannula simple mask as it can deliver oxygen from 20, FiO2 from 24 to 50 percent. 
What the advantage of a venti mask is that it will deliver a fixed rate of oxygen. For example, if the MD does not want the patient to get a high rate of oxygen like on a, as a non breather would give 70%, he might order 35% FiO2. So what you're going to do is on your device, you will locate the appropriate percentage of FiO2 and you will dial in there's an arrow here that you will use to dial in to get to the 35%. Now, you will notice that on the other side of that, of these numbers of the 35, 40, 50%, is 9, 12, 15. Those numbers represent the liters per minute that you will titrate your flow meter to, to so that you will ensure that you are accurately delivering the appropriate amount of oxygen that's as labeled by your venti mask. Now, one of the benefits also of a venti of the venti mask is that because it delivers that 24 to 50 percent FiO2, if you have a patient that you're titrating, you're weaning down their oxygen level, you can use this same device to go from 50 to 24 percent, you can go all the way down to one liter nasal cannula using the same oxygen de delivery system. However, one of the disadvantages of the venti mask, as, as was the uh, simple mask, is that it does make it a little more difficult for the patient to eat. They might feel a little bit claustrophobic. Um, and as, as also with the simple mask, one of the advantages is for those people who've had any kind of nasal surgery or nasal obstruction, this would be a good mask to use. Now lastly, we're going to discuss the non rebreather mask. This mask is most commonly used in emergency situations. Uh, for example, if the nurse feels that a cardiac arrest or respiratory arrest seems imminent and the patient's uh, endangered, uh, the nurse might run and get a non-breather mask. It supplies the highest FiO2 of all non-invasive delivery devices. And now it needs to be titrated to at least 10 liters or more to ensure that the bag does not collapse completely on inhalation. Now the mask has a one-way valve enabling the oxygen to be stored up and built up in the reservoir bag on inhalation. The one-way valve will open on, on inhalation and then on exhalation the valve will close. This prevents the uh, patient from exhaling CO2 into the reservoir and decreasing the amount of the FiO2 concentration. So this is basically just a little snippet of some of the many oxygen devices that you're going to find in the hospital setting. But see, these are some of the very basic devices that you're going to use. You're going to see them often in your practice. And so hopefully this video has helped uh, illuminate some of the uh, ways in which these devices are used. Thank you very much.